Hi everyone, my name is Eugene Tay, and this is a special episode where I am interviewing my own mother and the reason for this is I've heard great reviews from the community members with regards to Ajahn Ming's healing, sp healing powers and in the words of those who have gone to him and given me the testimonial, they said it's miraculous the healing is miraculous and i know my mom is suffering from a lot of pain uh, it could be due to old age uh, and also i mean just overall spare parts kind of failing so she is one of the most skeptical person i know and i feel that if i bring her to ajan ming and she gets healed they will, this will be a no bullshit testimonial so this is my mom hello <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay so Tell me about the problems that you have. I really don't feel good. Like this. This is, is there anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. Uh, firstly, I want him to help me with my numbness on my fingers. Okay. I already suffered for about four months. Yeah. Okay. So, due to, uh, according to doctors, it's due to my diabetes. Okay. That's the cause of it. So I got no choice to just to believe them lah. Mm. Uh, and at the same time, I have this arm problem. This arm problem is already nothing. It doesn't have bother me that much. Mm. But then when I was hospitalized, the first week, I found that it's really so painful. And yeah. they sent me for X-ray that it shows nothing. Then after uh, next visit again, they found that there's something that I need to do an operation of it. Okay. So I said I refuse to go for it. Don't do operation. <laughs> no, no, it's a long cut. It seems uh, what the tissue or what something wrong like that. Okay, but, but you couldn't find anything wrong or what's? They, they said you need to op only. Okay. Uh, now I because of my pressure and my diabetes. Mm. So they based on my diabetes and my blood pressure is going up high. Eh? So that's the reason. I they keep changing all types of tablets for okay. me. So it doesn't work much also. It doesn't work much. Ah. So, but on a scale of 1 to 10, would you say it's a 2 or a 3 for your strength? Strength. Uh, strength now really went down because after I hospitalized 1-1. One, one, so so you cannot carry a cup of water also? Can, but not that too heavy. La, the strength I might lift, okay. just leave it down. So let's see if you got... This one can. La, like now can. Now because gradually I'm trying my best okay. to what do things. This? Can. I might use two hands. La. Must use two hands. But one hand? Can also, but the left hand, the left hand is a problem, right? Uh, this hand, uh, yeah, this hand, I cannot, so cannot la. I cannot hang clothes also. Cannot because, hang clothes, uh, okay. What they base is, because I have so much on medicine now, on aspirin, and on uh, diabetes, or high blood, they add it, add it, this, I thought due to that, because of my hand, they said, no, this is because of your diabetes. So I got no choice, I got to believe them. Uh. Okay. So let's hope today, uh, I can, can, uh, can help me. I don't, okay, to be fair, I do not expect it to be a 100% yeah. cure. So already. we just give a try. Right, we just try. Yes. Okay, uh. so are you ready to go? Yes. Come, let's go. <laughs> you know, like the, the needle prick, prick, the whole thing, foot also same. Mm. Oh, foot, hand and feet. Oh, oh, oh. And they say it's because of the diabetes. diabetes. They cannot, they, they, they go, no, no way, nothing to do. I think maybe due to too many medicines, you know, the medicine doesn't cause the numbness, it's the, the diabetes. So no cure lah? They give me vitamin, no help, one month, hmm. two months I took vitamin, doesn't help, they wait, try to, on vitamin lah, she can help, but doesn't help at hmm. So leave on the ill for four months. <laughs> This one will be later because this one is the actually the the last stage. Okay. The shoulder, the hand, everything, two sections set okay. The hammer will be for yeah. Okay. But a lot of people it's don't sleeping. understand because they thought hand one is the easiest. Actually the hand one is the hardest one. Yeah. Yeah. 
it may sound a bit amazing, but because you know why or not? Mm. You see, in the olden days, right, uh, we hear a lot of Chinese people, they say that, okay, their grandfather, their grandmother, their parents pass away peacefully with no pain. Mm. Their one is totally no coming. Mm. But if you pass away with some pain, no matter it is cancer or mm. whatever issue, then it's coming. Mm. So as long as it's related to coming, I can solve. Yeah, okay. <laughs> The session begins with Arjun Ming understanding my mom's astrology based on her birth date, time and full name. From there, he's able to determine a few things about my mom's life, her karma and what are the best ways to clear the illnesses. Next comes the setup for the repentance prayer. Arjun writes yantra on seri leaves, activates them with prayers and uses them to appeal to the higher beings to remove the ailments from my mom's body. This can take quite a long time. Not more. Paksa, Paka, Wato, Wato, Kana, Nakana, 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 the Sakalo, Tanki, Yapu, Nakanu, Ioni, Lakali, Chan, Ioni, Hutayoni, Hupayoni, Huako, Sango, Wasado, Wakapasa. Next comes the first round of healing. Ajahn Meng tries to pinpoint the problem areas and it's not easy to find the root cause of each ailment. My mom had pain down her arm, pain in her hands, pain in the back, everywhere also pain. After the first round of healing, my mom is able to lift her hand up, like but it still isn't good enough. Okay. You want to carry something heavy here? Oh. On to round two of healing. Now, with some of the pain gone, my mom was able to pinpoint exactly which part of her shoulder was problematic. This one, this one, and where? The first section, they feel a bit different, relief. Then after they point out their actual pain, the area, then after that, I will be able to like specifically uh, to do it on that part. More prayers, more knocking, and more blowing. Two hours plus later, my mom was able to lift my back laden with camera equipment that was about nearly three kilograms, I think, over her head. Now okay. Now okay. Now no pain really on there. Ah, you see, you hear the kyak again? Yeah. You hear the sound again? Later, the bone not crack. Barang is like Yeah, same. I never take out anything. I just remember you. Wow. A few more times? Down. Uh, up. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's not before you came here, right? Yes. I asked you to hold a mm. mug of water. Yeah. And you couldn't hold a mug of water. Uh. So, I know the back is heavy, but how do you feel? Was it still painful? No, okay. No, the So just pain. now when I asked you at home, I said mm. on a scale of 1 to 10, mm. you said it's about 1 or 2 upon 10. Uh. Now how's your strength? Is it 3, 4, 5, 6? More than that. La. More than uh, that? Uh, 5 or 6. La. 5 or 6? Uh, okay, no. okay. <laughs> uh. They call it dry eyes. Mm, My dad, seeing how effective the healing process was, also <laughs> wanted in on the action. He He's been complaining about wonky knee for many years and that affected his ability to bowl, which forced him into early retirement. Okay. After another two hours of healing, my dad was able to actually jog on the spot when even getting up to go to the bathroom was an issue before. Ajahn Meng. Hi. Welcome back to the show again. Hi. <laughs> Hi Eugene, nice to see you again. How we started this journey was quite amazing. It was just a love spell, talking about, you know, Thai magic. And then I discovered that he can heal and he has ghost stories. Uh, but why we're doing this particular episode again was that members of the community who has went to see Ajahn Ming has sent me texts and I also received video testimonials on how amazing the healing has been for them. And when it comes to healing, you know, um, we know that there is spiritual healing. But what I received was the fact that this spiritual healing was immediate. Uh, first session, second session, up to four sessions. Being Eugene Tay for Supernatural Confessions, I'm always very curious. How does this work? And I'm sure you guys have the same question as well. How does this work? Really, man? Can man? Magic, is it? So, I want to find out the origin story, find out how it's done and perhaps he can share some of the 
behind the scenes of how he healed other people. So Aja Ming. Hi. <coughs> so today is a story about you. Okay. So perhaps uh, we can start off with how did you discover that you have the gift for healing? Okay, actually I discovered that I got this gift of healing inside a Thai prison. Thai prison? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I was in Thailand for four years. And then during this period of time, so actually uh, there was this suddenly, this case, the Thai authorities actually got put me inside a prison for something that I never do. Okay. So I was inside there for 23 months. So for the first 11 months, eh, for the first 12 months, I was actually considered very fortunate and enjoying my life inside there. Okay. Because Thai prison is actually a very different environment compared to Singapore prison or other country prison because basically everything you need to you can you can find all kind of service inside and people pay for all kind of service there's like massage service so those inmates who actually they don't have family support no family to actually to give them transfer money to them monthly they were actually like massage for others or some they will actually wash clothes for others so, mm. they will, so all the different price range like 20 baht 30 baht or 100 baht for all the different kind of service okay so basically uh when i was first inside there so my loved ones were still able to contact me uh they actually keep transferring money to the to my thai prison account so and initially i thought that I can actually be released very soon because during that time it was uh, so they just caught me they accused me so I was going to court every seven days so I always have high hope that I can go out in the next seven day in the next seven day in the next seven days yeah. because like in your words you did not do the crime you were accused of a crime that you didn't yes. commit so it was only after 12 months later and I understand that because for those crimes that although I didn't do it but for those crimes that they actually accuse me, right? I believe I'm paying for my own bad karma. So that trip to prison was totally like cleanse myself mm. and wash myself out from everything because I pay for everything. Really. So it wiped you out as well, right? Like prior to that, you had a bit of savings and you were, uh, I think you were um, an amulet dealer back then. Yes, right? yes. So you correct. a mass amount of savings. Your business was good. So my saving was totally wiped out during that 12 months. Mm. Mm, wiped out from the lawyer, wiped out from the, uh, from the food and even cigarettes in prison. So one cigarette actually cost, uh, you know, those Chinese Anghun tobacco. Yeah. So one stick of cigarette inside there is 200 baht, which is $8. <laughs> oh, wow. So it's even more expensive than the, than the I mean, the low, our Singapore cigarette. Yeah. And... If you want to have a proper meal, so the meal can cost from 200 300 to 800 dollars a day. Baht or sing? Sing. 800 sing, sing. is sing dollar. What you get steak is it? You just get a uh, very small kampong chicken <laughs> and that is already a very nice kind of food inside really. wow. If does the Thai prison actually give you food? Yes, they give you food. But the food is only rice and then uh, with some vegetables. So the vegetables are actually plants, all the plants, all the kang kong, they actually, they plant down there. So in the morning, you can see all the kitchen helper pluck all the kang kong from the field. And then lunch, your lunch time, you'll see all the kang kong on your plate. Lah. So it's, it's nearly inedible lah, to me. Okay. So that's why my saving was about for the first year. So it was until my saving was being wiped out during that time was COVID. And medication support was very bad. Okay. And because I realized the seriousness of my case already, so I start to read my own astrology. Uh, I start to combine whatever, all the witch heart, all the magic, <clears throat> all the spiritual knowledge that all my past master has actually teach me sit down there, I read carefully at my own astrology, am I able to escape from the sentence this time or not? Mm. Because uh, the sentence, my sentence can go as high as up to 18 years. If you don't mind me asking, if it's not too sensitive to talk about that, mm. what are you being charged for? I was being charged of like forming, a, we are forming a syndicate, money laundering, um, they accuse us of scam, 
and they accuse us of scamming the public. Okay. Um, so all the four different charges, so all add-on can go as high as up to 18 years. Mm. And how I was actually involved is because I got funds in Singapore. So I just actually just exchange money and the funds to, to use, to convert to Thai baht. Mm. I have a Thai account. Mm. So the funds that was actually being transferred into the, my Thai account was from one of my companies, which I don't know them at all. So you were part of a company that you have no idea you are part of? Uh, there was a total of 22 person being charged. Okay. But nobody knows each other at all. Okay. Uh, it's like just money transfer. So I was the last one. Uh, I was the last person. Maybe perhaps someone up there in the 22 man team was doing money laundering. Then you were just. Yes, uh, yes, correct, correct. It drips <coughs> down to you. La. Mm. Okay. So actually, during that time, because my finance is actually quite okay, one. So actually, I was. I've been in the spiritual trade for 18 years. I started my spiritual trade since I was six. But that was the time when I was actually quite tired. I want to give up the status of being an ambulant dealer. So I think this is also the reason why it comes to me. So it make me realize, make me read my own astrology that I have to continue this path. Mm. How's life like in a Thai prison? Could you give us an idea how the 23 months was like for you? So the room is actually just as big over here. Uh, the ration can range from 50 over people up to 70 over people sleeping in the same room. So actually when you sleep, right? So every night when I turn my head around, I will see all the feet. <laughs> every night people give me handphone, iPhone, <laughs> iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes if the there's too many images, too many new images, right? Then nighttime people will give you free pillow, people will give you free bolster because they, <laughs> the leg will have to put on your chest. So you told me that <clears throat> when you were a new inmate, you slept curl up like a fetus. Mm. And then there was a more lauchel person in front of you say, that might come stretch to me. Mm, yes. So, so, he, so then he was holding then he was holding onto your leg like a pillow. So like he was so he was holding to my leg and I was holding to his leg. So we hugged each other leg to sleep. <laughs> so that was what we go through. Uh -huh. And uh, when we bathe, right? So it's like they were in the Thai, they say we ju just use a bowl. And then after that, when we just take water from the bowl, mm. because it's not from the tap, so we take water from the bowl. Then after you can see all the sand. Sometimes you will see prawns inside there. For Singaporeans, it's... Ah, yeah. But for the Thai, if they see the prawns, they will actually keep it so they will cook, for, <laughs> cook it inside later. <laughs> Did you ever lose faith while you are in there? Like, uh, halfway, you're like, wow, shit, 18 years, I think that's it. La. No, actually, I didn't lose faith, to be frank. I didn't lose faith when I was being caught. Mm. But I actually just want to give up the idea of doing, being in the spiritual trade anymore. I just want to do marriage and pray for myself only. Mm. That's it. Okay. I'm already tired and a bit sick of giving advice to others at that time. I just want to hold back. Lah. I okay. don't want to share with anyone anymore. Really. So then how did the transformation <coughs> happen? So I start, started with astrology reading for myself and for all my tankeris mm. inside there. So all of them, they come to me for consultation. So people that you don't know also in the room just come to you? Lah. There was this period of time when I was so famous inside the prison, inside that department, right? Yeah. That even the officer, they also come to me for fortune telling. The officer also come to me for healing. The healing actually started when it was the COVID second round. So medication support was very bad. So everyone sleep in the room, so the, the, they don't unlock the room. So every day we wake up, we can see people beside you just suddenly just die one. You can just suddenly wake up, then there's a corpse lying beside you. Okay. So that is why during that time, I start doing the healing and it actually I saved them all because there's no medicine at all. Yeah. For that two weeks to one month when they lock you inside the room. Mm. Uh, so that's why <clears throat> those people, the first day they see, oh, there's one inmate in the, in the cell who died. The second day also got people die. The third day also got people die. So people, uh, they already come with faith already. They say, even if I don't do it, I will die. Mm. And after they do the healing section with me, though some got heart attack, some got asthma, and they survive through that period. So that is when I know 
why my healing work. Then at one point, the, the, the officers, all that, they treat you like a royalty there. Oh, uh, yes. So they give me actually special privilege. They bring me around. They ask me, they ask me to read their astrology. They ask me to read their wife astrology. They ask me to adjust their altar. They ask me to do the feng shui for the, for the sector. <laughs> because they want to get promoted, they want to get recognition from the royal family. Ah. Mm, so that is where how it starts. Were there any other people in prison that see what you have been doing then challenge you? No, because initially because I was a Singaporean. Mm. So a lot of Thai people initially they look down on us, thinking that how can a Singaporean do such kind of things? But after that everyone accept after the healing the COVID section and after all the officer they give me all the special privilege so uh during that time i was in sector two so i was that famous until like all the sector three sector four sector five officer come over cross over and look for me for consultation and do healing in your previous video you mentioned that you heal based on clearing the karma yes like how did that occur to you okay because prison is a place where you will see all the different kind of karma. So when I was inside there, I see all the different form of karma. So I even understand there's a lot of lady boy inside prison. Mm. So, you know, when you see the first one, you don't know why he become a lady boy. You see two, you see three, you don't know why they become a lady boy. It's only after you see 10, you see 15. Oh, so all the lady boy got one common problem because their parents, their monks used to have sex in the temple before. Oh. So that was the karma that was thrown on their kid. So it can be the issue when, uh, when they were in their monkhood, they couldn't control their sexual emotion. So they actually get involved. They have some sex activity with, with the lady devotees or they do something funny, sexual thing inside the temple. So that is why this punishment was thrown on their mm. kids. Okay, if we talk about the healing, then actually, I don't have the ability to clear away the bad karma. Okay. I can only do the repentance prayer for them, so I act as a spiritual lawyer. Mm. Mm, so this thing actually did happen, but your, you have already suffered much longer than your sentence already, so it's time for you to go for a parole. Mm. So after I do the repentance prayer, prayer for them, then I do a healing section for them, so that this is how it works. So they actually, or oh, after the repentance prayer, so whatever that they have done wrong, whatever they have owed, whether it is this life or last life, knowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, all clear. So in that case, it's almost like everyone will have bad karma. We are all born yeah, in yeah. sin. Right? Correct. Mm. So, and everyone also falls sick. In some mm, way, of correct. So, how does this cleansing of karma works hand in hand with with the healing portion? Okay, you see, you cannot say that everyone falls sick. Mm. Uh, it's wrong to say that everyone falls sick. Okay. So there are elderly that live to right old age, eighty plus. They just pass away peacefully with no pain. So that is no karma. But if you die of pain, you die of heart attack, you die of cancer, you go through a lot of pain. Before you die, that is confirmed karma. I really don't feel good. Like Have there been anyone that come to you and then you do the repentance prayer, but still didn't work? No. You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.